Hello folks, my name is Jeff Davies and today we're going to take a look at the Amazon Basics Portable Foldable LED Light Box. Stay tuned. Okay, so I purchased this unit probably about a year and a half ago. So this is kind of a long-term review. I've taken literally thousands of product photographs with it from shoes to books to jewelry to watches boots i mean you name it anything that can fit in here i use this is this is my go-to unit uh, because the lighting is just so great it's not perfect it's got some a couple downfalls but they are not deal breakers and there's work around uh, workarounds for those which we will discuss or i will discuss first some specs about this unit it's 25 by 30 by 25 inches uh, it has two led strips or kind of bars at the top which you'll get a better view of uh, as i demo it it's got one in the front it's got one in the side they're 5600 kelvin so it's a nice white light um, it has a three door kind of flat down system with three openings that have little magnets in them, which is nice to keep them open or keep them closed. It comes with its own power supply, which plugs into the side. Now the power supply does not have an on off switch. So not a super bad thing for me, maybe for you. When I demo it, you'll, you'll kind of see a, a little better, you'll have a better idea of why that could be a problem or not a problem for you. It comes with a nice white vinyl backdrop, which is heavy duty, and you can clean it with your favorite cleaner. This unit also collapses. It folds together, which we'll demo. It goes down to about three and a half inches, and that's exactly what I needed. I couldn't put, have a light box permanently set up. I needed the space. It was just too big. This is perfect for that. It literally will collapse or set up in 30 seconds once you get a little bit of practice. 30 seconds. It's so easy. That's why I love it. Uh, it's on the heavy side. It's 14 pounds. That's not a problem. I like heavy. It's durable. Um, you know, it looks kind of flimsy maybe, but it's really not. It's all you know plastic reinforced, so it's very sturdy. I haven't had any problem. I folded it up and down probably a hundred times. No issues whatsoever. This retails on Amazon currently for 136 bucks. I believe it has gone up a little bit. I think it was about $10 cheaper when I got it. But let's go ahead and show you how I set it up and set it down and how I deal with a couple of the issues that uh, may be cons. As you can see, folded down, this unit is actually quite slim. It's about two and a half, three inches. <clears throat> so it's uh, quite convenient to store, which is one of the primary reasons I purchased it because I needed, uh, I couldn't, I could not leave it up permanently. I just didn't have the space. So that's a three inch or a three foot yardstick there for reference. This is the top of the unit, and it has this uh, zippered flap. I just tend to leave it open. It does have a little Velcro sticky inside there. I keep the user manual, and I also keep two clips for if I want to hang a different colored uh, backdrop on the inside. I can do that. So on the top, besides the flap, it does have this handle. This is what you'll use to actually extend the unit. It does have two Velcro flaps on each side that uh, lock it into the storage or uh, flat configuration. And then also over here is the jack for the power supplies to the LED lights. not sure what this flap is for maybe keep a business card you'll see the Amazon basics logo 
and again this hole you'll see once we get it set up uh, goes all the way through so you can take a direct overhead shot of the item I use it for other purposes though which I will demonstrate in a little bit okay so right now I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to set this up it's literally 30 seconds or whatnot the first thing just make sure your little velcro flaps are released here grab this top handle I kind of put my hand on the bottom and just pull it straight up and what happens is this flap falls down I just push that back all the way and this is velcroed at the top this is your back backdrop and this is a a vinyl uh, backdrop so you can spray it off with Windex or your favorite cleaner to uh, get it clean mine's pretty scuffed right now but it really doesn't matter have to drop down this top flap otherwise it'll uh, block the lights and if you want to use this it has three uh, little magnetized kind of openings and you can pop a camera in there or pop the uh, the lens opening in there if you need that extra uh, reflection from the front it is also white I do not tend to use this down except very occasionally it's just too inconvenient I use this primarily to take uh, shots of shoes um, that I saw on eBay and I take 12 shots of each shoe or each pair of shoes and constantly adjusting this is just not realistic so at this point we'll plug the unit in so you can get a uh, look at the lighting how intense it is And we'll put a pair of, throw a pair of Allen Edmonds shoes in there. So that is a pair of Allen Edmond uh, men's loafers. We're uh, inside the light box right now. This is the standard LED lighting. So as you can see there is a strip of LED lights that run along the front edge of the box. There is also another an identical strip that runs along the uh, side. So I guess the front would be your key lighting. This is kind of fill lighting. So with product photography lighting is everything and I think you can never have too much. So what I do when I take any kind of product photography uh, shots in this box is I use the top instead of using it to take photographs which I never do from the top down I take this $5 lamp you can get from Lowe's or Home Depot and I put a 5600K uh, uh, floodlight in it And I simply put that right over the top. But the first thing I do is take a piece of this tissue paper, put that down, put the light over the top. That tissue paper will diffuse the light, make it less harsh. Now it's it's lit up, you know, much more to my liking. And now I can get those very crispy white background photos uh, without using a ridiculously high ISO. Now you may be wondering, well, holy cow, you're putting a light on top of there with tissue paper. 
uh, yeah, that was a concern of mine as well. But this LED light stays so cool. At any time, I can put my hand on it. Even after it's been running for two hours, I can put my hand on it. It's just, it's warm. That's it. It's not hot. It's just warm. So I'm not advising anyone to do this. Actually, I'm advising everyone not to do it. But this is the way I handle it. Sometimes I just look under there to get the light centered so it's nice and bright. So we'll take a look around it. You'll see the seam there, that's where it folds. There is the power supply. And it does not have an on off switch. So you literally have to unplug it and plug it in each time. Not a big deal because it's just, it's right there. So it's relatively convenient. If it was anywhere else, it might be a big deal. Uh, the transformer in here does tend to get warm. The lights stay relatively cool. I'll kind of give you a uh, shot of the top of the unit. And the trick, when you're taking product photography with this light, is to overexpose. And you'll see how when I overexpose, I, this is actually plus two f-stops. See how that background just turns white? That's exactly what you want for product photography. You want the focus on the shoes or the item, not the background. So if I set my camera back to a zero exposure, now you can see that. You can see the background. And you can actually see the seam. And that's what a lot of people have been complaining about is they're they're able to see the seam and when they take their shots. But if you overexpose it, that seam is gone. And what I will do in post, sometimes I'll pump up the contrast a little bit just to make the item, whatever it is, the shoe pop a little more. But that's basically how you get rid of the uh, any seam in your white background. Because that bugged me at first and I tried, I think I tried steaming it or something. Uh, but then I just learned that if I overexpose it, which, you know, in a real life situation, live video, you're shooting people or whatever, that's not going to be acceptable. But for, for product photography, it works wonders. So I'll turn that back down. Now some product items do not look good or are difficult to shoot in a uh, with a white background. This only comes with a white background. So what I did, and I'll quickly demonstrate, and why I keep those two clips back here. I just keep them back there so I don't lose them basically. I have these two, I have these two little uh, clips, and then I went to the fabric store and got this kind of a, uh, I don't know, this smoky looking cotton kind of fabric. So all I do is take this and I clip it to the top mounting bar.
let me see if I've got anything white. But now I've got a much uh, nicer backdrop for these these white or cream colored sneakers. With the white backdrop, they would just kind of blend in. So I don't use this too often. And again, with this, I may not overexpose it two stops. With this background, there's there's two full stops overexposure, and that just that doesn't work. You know, but those look that that looks great with this backdrop. And again, you can go to the fabric store and get this for like a couple bucks, a piece of this fabric. The breakdown is pretty much just the opposite. In this case, I'll get rid of this, take this backdrop off. I'll take the supplemental top lighting, which is critical for me. And again, I'm, I'm grabbing this light. I'm grabbing this light. It's, it's just barely warm. So there's literally no fire hazard from heat anyways. This, this light just doesn't, it, it's great. I love, love LED lights, love them because they don't waste energy on heat or as much energy on heat. I guess I'll put this back to my shelf because I use it for a just general purpose. Improve lighting. Put the flat back up. You can see that. Just goes back on. I unplug the unit. The lights off. I throw my piece of tissue paper in there for next time. And then I take the backdrop and it has a little Velcro here. And I'm just going to pull it up to the top. That's in place. Now at the bottom, you may not be able to see it very well. There's a little loop of fabric and this is what you pull. And this pulls out the back. Once you pull this out, it's going to, oops, I forgot one thing. The front, okay? The front also has little Velcro. And this simply slides up horizontal, or, uh, yeah, horizontally to the top and just hooks up there. Okay? Now the unit is completely ready to go ahead and collapse. I'm going to pull this fabric on the bottom, but I'm also going to hold the... I'm also going to hold this top loop. Because once I pull this out, it'll just slam down. If I don't... That's it. It's done. This is why I like it. Uh, because now I get my desk back. You know, I spend a couple hours taking uh, photographs. I get my desk back. Put this off to the side. Boom. Boom. These photos illustrate why I like this Amazon light box so much. These photos were taken with my cheap old Canon T3i with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. These are just random photos that I pulled out of my archive. No post processing. This was all done using just the camera settings and the Amazon light box with the supplemental lighting hack on the top very happy with the way they these turn out and nice white background with the crispy sharp product looks great well i hope this video was helpful if you liked it uh please don't forget to like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want hit the bell i appreciate it 
Um, and I'll catch you later. Thank you.